If Scripture reflects God, then our feelings about Scripture would be our feelings about God. Feelings matter. After all, think about it. When a man proposes to his future wife, he's nervous, right? Men, men, do you remember that moment? I mean, most of us, we're pretty sure she's going to say yes, right? Pretty sure. But we're nervous. Why are we nervous? Because one of the most important decisions that we'll ever make, and we love her, and we want her to say yes. Our feelings communicate the truth and the gravity of that moment. When going to the beach, parents love to see their children scream and laugh as they run into the waves and they dig holes. Why? Because their excitement reveals their love for the beach and what we're doing with them. If they just sat there in the beach chair and pouted the whole time, their feelings would communicate something, right? But we love to see them run and we love to see them scream and dig holes because it's showing that they have joy in the very time together as a family at the beach. Our feelings about God's word reveals how we think and we feel about God. So how or do we think about God's word? Well, the psalmist answers this question many, many, many times just here in Psalm 119. In fact, 10 times we read that the psalmist delights in God's word. Psalm 119, verse 14. In the ways of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. Verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Verse 47, for I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. Verse 174, I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. To delight in God's word is to delight in God. So I ask you, do you delight in God's word? Does God's word bring you joy? Think about verse 72. It says, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Do you love God's word more than money, more than your checkbook, more than the things you can buy? If you had a choice, you could have $1 million and never have access to God's word or be poor and be able to read your own Bible every single day. Which one would you choose? Which one would you choose? The answer to that question truly does reveal your view of God. Look at verse 103. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Is God's word sweet to your mouth this morning? Do you love spending time? Do you long to be in the word each and every day? Now I imagine there are some of you and you're saying, yes, that's exactly what I love. And it just resonates with you. But I imagine there's some of you who are going, I don't know if I'd call it sweeter than honey. Maybe some of you want to say, no, I'm not sure that I delight and love and, and long to spend time in God's word each day. And yet God's word calls us to delight and love and delight in spending time in it. So what are you to do if we're not delighting in God's word? If you're here today and you're not savoring the word of God, what should our response be? Well, number one, we, we repent. We repent for not delighting in the very words of God. We repent for not loving his word more than gold and silver and thinking of it as, great, as, as sweeter than honey. So first thing is we'd repent. For our wrong view of the word is also our wrong view of God. Secondly, we would pray. Pray for feelings of affection, asking God to increase our delight. As you read Psalm 119 and you come in to like verse 14, in the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. Your prayer can, Father, help me to delight in your word as much as in all riches. In verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. God, help me to delight in your statutes. I find delight in my commandments. Father, help me to delight in your commandments. We pray the very words of Scripture that God would increase our affections, that he would incline our hearts to love and learn his word. And then third, you read. You read his word each and every day, trusting that God will grow you in your affections. And one thing I have found is that the more someone spends time in the word, reading the word, asking God to increase his love for the word. He answers it every time. 
Think of it this way. If you're married, well, many of you are married. Do you remember the last time you had a fight? Some of you were like, yes, it was just earlier today. Um, it was yesterday. But, but think about it. The last time you were, you were in a fight with your spouse, how do you overcome your anger and your lack of affection? Something has happened. There's been some type of tiff. I'm sure it was of the utmost importance because they always are, right? And so we're upset. What do you do when you're upset with your spouse? How do you overcome your lack of affection for your spouse at that time? Do you just ignore it? That's what some of us do. Do you just wait until you feel like being loving again? And then you love your spouse? You could do those things, but those would not be the right way. Or what you could do is you could do acts of love and kindness towards your wife, trusting that as you love her, as you speak kind words to her, that your feelings and affections will increase. You bring her flowers. You give her a card. You go on a walk with her, seeking forgiveness. And as you act, your affections are increased. Have you found that to be true? I encourage you, if you're, if you're typical... Um, uh, strategy of dealing with um, relational problems is to ignore them. Try acting in love towards that person. Watch how that changes your affections for them. Watch how it increases your affections for that person. The same practice applies to God's word. We overcome the apathy in our hearts by trusting in God and acting in accordance with his word, knowing that he will increase our affections. We don't wait till we want to read God's word. I don't wait to love my wife until I feel like loving her. I love my wife because I'm called to love my wife. I read God's word because I'm called to read God's word. And because God is good and the spirit promises to revive our soul and our heart through his word word. We open up God's word beholding the God of glory, knowing that he'll reveal to us his son, Jesus Christ, and that he will increase our affections and our delight for him. You overcome apathy to the word by hungering for the word. So I encourage you, wherever you're at today, wherever your thought process is, however your feelings are towards God's word, begin opening up God's word and just asking, God, increase my affection. Help me to see the beauty and the joy of your word. Help me delight in this word more than all the riches that I, could pro that I could possibly obtain. And watch as in time, God answers that question. And you begin to long to be in the word every single day.